Friends, there is a great push for revival and unity going on in America right now. The various churches and denominations are uniting to, quote, make America great again and return America back to God. And make no mistake, there is a great revival happening across America right now and even the world. But these revivals are based on error. Yes, there is power in these revivals, but the power is not from God. Just look at this National Mall event that is coming up soon. An event that the Pope is even getting involved in, after the organiser himself spoke to the Pope about it. We didn't know it then, but God was putting in our hearts at that time what we believe is Together 2016. The same day we got the permit for the mall, uh, all of these groups started to say they were in. Hillsong United said they're in. Francis Chan said he's in. Michael W. Smith said he's in. These things don't happen. I mean, just imagine a true movement of unity. Not just uniting people like you, but the whole church rallying together on one day. And then imagine what that united church can do going from this place. And I really don't even believe that July 16th is about starting a wave. I think God is already doing the wave. I just think it's happening in different corners and we've been divided. We got this movement here and this denomination here and that group here and they're all great things but we don't even know about each other because we don't have the same name on our sign. And so on July 16th we're going to see all of these waves collide. Catholics and Lutherans and, and Evangelicals and Charismatics literally rallying across the nation saying, you know what? We may not say the same things, but we're on the same team. We're lifting up Jesus, and we're going to saturate this nation. And that could change the world. Do whatever you have to do to get to the National Mall on July 16th, believing that God has invited you, God is calling you, and that the time is now for the church to rally, to meet with Jesus. All these groups and churches have the same fundamental errors. They disregard the law of God by uplifting Rome's Sunday Sabbath. They worship the false trinity God. They believe in the Im immortality of the soul. And they reject the truth that God the Father and Jesus Christ are in the most holy temple right now judging the world. And upon these errors they can all unite under Babylon. Just look at this prophetic quote from a dear woman of God. I saw the Father rise from the throne, and in a flaming chariot go into the Holy of Holies within the veil and sit down. Then Jesus rose up from the throne, and most of those who were bowed down arose with him. I did not see one ray of light pass from Jesus to the careless multitude after he arose and they were left in perfect darkness. Those who arose when Jesus did kept their eyes fixed on him as he left the throne and led them out a little way. Then he raised his right arm, and we heard his lovely voice saying, Wait here, I am going to my Father to receive the kingdom. Keep your garments spotless, and in a little while I will return from the wedding and receive you to myself. Then a cloudy chariot with wheels like flaming fire surrounded by angels came to where Jesus was. He stepped into the chariot and was borne to the holiest where the Father sat. There I beheld Jesus, a great high priest, standing before the Father. On the hem of his garment was a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate. Those who rose up with Jesus would send up their faith to him in the holiest and pray. My Father, give us thy spirit. Then Jesus would breathe upon them the Holy Ghost. In that breath was light, power, and much love, joy, and peace. I turned to look at the company who were still bowed before the throne. They did not know that Jesus had left it. Satan appeared to be by the throne, trying to carry on the work of God. I saw them look up to the throne and pray, Father, give us thy spirit. Satan would then breathe upon them an unholy influence. In it, 
there was light and much power, but no sweet love, joy and peace. Satan's object was to keep them deceive, and to draw them back and deceive God's children. So will there be power in this National Mall event and any other evangelical event for revival? Yes, there will be much power, and that is what is so deceiving about these revivals. The people are so focused on signs and wonders that they forget about Bible truths and are carried away in Satan's deceptions. Great revivals and power is to be shown around the world, and this unity between churches and religions will seem to be blessed. But this is all part of Satan's end-time deception, to unite the world under his banner. Please seek the truth for yourself, and don't get caught up in the trap that Satan is laying.